38. Did you guys hear me? It's over here. All right. Welcome back to the Castor Valley News live show. Is is the audio okay on this? Test, test, test. Can you guys hear me okay? I got a new microphone here that I'm using, so I'm I'm not Okay, I'm hearing that it sounds good, and I hope you guys don't hear my breath, but uh, I hear, and there's some popping, which is probably from, can you hear me now? How, how, how's the sound? Sorry, guys, we're, we're doing, we're doing some trial and error with a new microphone here. I wanted to, uh, to make sure you guys heard me better. Um, is this, is this microphone better than, than normal, guys? Let me know. If it's not, I'll just go back to the other one. This one just, it's its a little bit more fancy, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so I'm hearing that it sounds good, and I'm hoping that it does sound great. Um, welcome back to the show, everyone. Let's, um, let's blast into a, um, blast into the roll call here. So, oh, wow, lots of people here. Um. Yeah, let me get it. Let me get into the roll call here. So we have got Matella. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. We've got um, our ace reporter out on the streets, Bob. Bob Wiseman, how are you doing, sir? Good to uh, to have you on the show. Nicole, hello. Thank you for the feedback. I'm glad this new. Um, it's actually a headset. It's a microphone. Um, headphone thing that's it's it's sleek and sassy and neat and i'm glad it works tracy is here how are you doing tracy thank you for joining the show kathleen is here um david is here how you doing david good to have you on the show uh jill is here uh the audio was good up in northern ontario so we're we're blasting out uh, to Canada. That's awesome. And Viv says no picture, but she can hear us. Uh, we don't do video on this show. It's kind of like an old school kind of radio talk show. Um, I think I said hello to Jill. Jill is asking about the picture. We don't do picture. It's it's just a uh, it's a piece of duct tape covered over the uh, <laughs> over the camera on the computer here, like an old school radio show is what we're doing. Um, Kim is asking also about the picture. There is no picture. It is just audio, like a like an old school radio show. Um, if you saw the video, it would be distracting because I'm not I'm not much to look at. Um, <laughs> uh, Aaron, how are you doing, Aaron? Thank you for joining the show. Uh, Pam is here. Thank you for joining the show, Pam. Um, I hope I didn't miss anybody in the roll call. Let me go through one more time, make sure I'm not skipping anybody. Um, Heidi, I think, I, I hope I didn't, I hope I'm not, if, if Heidi, if I said hello to you twice, that you, it, it's, we're twice as glad to have you on the show. Um, I think, I think that's it for, for the roll call. Uh, nope. Shirley, how are you doing? Thank you for joining the show. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor for tonight's show. That is Restore and Rework. And they are fantastic folks over on San Carlos Avenue. Um, they have a store full of vintage items. And let me let me go through the list here. They have all sorts of cool stuff and I don't I don't want to miss anything. Uh, they have new Dixie Bell paint products. They have garden and home decor, custom furniture. They do restoration and painting on site, antique, vintage, and rustic treasures. Custom metal designs are available. 
And did I mention they're awesome folks? They're super nice folks. They are located at 2572 San Carlos Avenue, and um, which is uh, it's a street right behind Castro Valley Boulevard. Um, it's on the other end. It's on the other end of the Valley Inn bar. So giving you a little more geographic uh, direction if you're going to head over to restore and work. One more time, 2572 San Carlos Avenue. Uh, the phone number is 510-750-1345. Roxy is tuning in. How are you doing, Roxy? Um, there's another, someone else that I, that dialed in that I needed to mention. I don't want to miss anybody on the roll call here. Um, sorry. I think, I think, I think, I think I said hello to everyone. Um, hang on, folks. Uh, Don says something about Stanton Avenue. Maybe you're check. maybe you're checking in from, uh, Stanton Avenue, which is cool, but I think it's awesome that we've got somebody listening in Canada. Uh, Guzman to Mike. Are you Mike or are you Guzman? I'll say hello to Guzman and I'll say hello to Mike <laughs> to cover all the bases there. Um, we do have someone who's going to call in and we're going to do um, we're going to do something new and different. Um, that person will be calling in at 7:15, but. Hey, Annette, how are you? Thank you for joining the show. Annette is usually on just about every show, so thank you for joining us again. Roger is listening. Uh, Karen is listening. And if I skipped you or missed you, it is not intentional because I love doing the roll call. Okay, it is Mike de Guzman. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, Don is mentioning, oh, San Carlos is, yes, San Carlos is off of Stanton. Thank you uh, to give you guys more geographic information about where Restore and Rework is. They have really cool stuff there. Uh, Shirley is listening in Danville. Thank you for joining the show. Um, Shirley is from Castor Valley. So, hey, shout out to Shirley in Danville from your friends in Castor Valley. Dennis is listening. Good evening to you as well, Dennis. Wanted to give you guys a reminder that we do have um, a small handful left of the newest Castro Valley magazines, the Castro Valley News magazines. Um, we posted... Janice is listening. How you doing? Um, Sorry, I'm just looking at I'm looking at the thread here, making sure I don't miss anybody for the roll call. Um, but we do have a handful of the the, the newest Castor Valley news magazines with uh, Spencer Christian on the cover, and I need to send a couple to him as well. But um, shoot us an email if you would like to receive a copy or two. The email is cvnewsmagazine at gmail.com like i said we we don't have a lot left the the first day that that it was posted that we were doing this um i think i sent out uh i sent out a lot of magazines actually this morning so um shoot us an email at like i said cvnewsmagazine at gmail.com and we will send you some magazines and Janice, hello to Janice. I said hello to Heidi twice. <laughs> hello again, Heidi. Nicole Ann, hello. Um, I think I covered everyone. The other thing that I wanted to mention as well is we we still have um, quite a few of the Hello Love Castor Valley stickers. If you would like to receive one, Please send us a photograph of a receipt from a business because we really want to. Um, we really want you guys and everyone else who's listening, who may not, who, or who is not listening, people in general. We really want people to patronize and support and um, and show some love to our local businesses. So 
That email is bizsticker, B-I-Z, sticker at gmail.com. One more time, bizsticker, B-I-Z, sticker at gmail.com. And again, um, if you are if you are spending money at a local business and we prefer that they be independent businesses, so the, the, the chain, um, like, you know, the big chain supermarkets or the, um, uh, the fast food places are excluded. And, uh, yep, biz sticker, B-I-Z, sticker at gmail.com. Send us a photo of your receipt from a local business where you're spending money and spreading the love, and we will send you some stickers. And the cool thing about what we're doing um, about that, someone's asking about the discussion about the, the fast food happening on the boulevard. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later, um, which that is a huge, huge, huge um, topic of conversation. Uh, getting back to the stickers, yeah, we... Castrovelli, my sorry, I'm Robert with Castrovelli News. Um, I want to do everything I can to help businesses, all of our businesses, particularly the independent businesses during this difficult time. So we're giving out those Hella Love Castrovelli stickers to people who send in photos of their receipts. There is no limit on how many you can get. So say if you went to Pete's, if say if you were going shopping local one day and you went to Pete's Hardware and spent some money and you went to Aaron's Art Studio and then you went to the Hallmark Shop and then you went to, um, uh, uh, what's another place? Uh, if you went, ate at, ate at um, Aroma, you get four stickers. Send in those four photographs of your receipts and you get four stickers. We want to spread the love. As you know, it is so important. It's vital. I'm not going to even say important. It's vital that we support our local businesses. Sorry, I got to catch my breath because it's it's very important that we support our local businesses. And I'm I'm <laughs> I'm exasperated with uh, that. Uh, the importance that's overcoming me. Um, so please, if if you're out and about, shop local businesses anyways. But if you do, like I said, send in the receipts of those of um, from from those businesses, and we'll send you some stickers. There are actually people who have sent in photos from like three or four businesses, and I I am happily sending them um, receipts. Uh, Viv is saying that it's not fair. I don't live down there anymore. You're in Auburn, was born in Castro Valley, Eden Hospital. Um, thank you for listening, Viv. Uh, let me think of a creative way that you can get a sticker while shopping local. Um, oh, man. Uh, shoot. If you know somebody who still lives in Castro Valley, you could maybe buy a gift card and send it to your friend in Castro Valley, and we can send you a sticker. Um, I'm looking at, I'm looking at, looking at some of the questions here because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to exclude people, especially people who who used to live in Castro Valley. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, Viv, uh, if. If you still know people who live in town, buy buy a, a gift certificate um, to maybe. Uh, and what the other thing that's unfortunate is the hair salons and nail salons are still closed. So the other thing, if you actually buy a gift certificate, gift certificates count. Send us a receipt or or um, a screen capture from your online purchase because we get we get quite. A, I've got, I've received quite a few of those. Hang on, here's our guest. Hello. Hello. Are you there? I'm here. Hang on. Let me let me activate the speakerphone. Uh, t t test. Say something again, sir. Hello. 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 This is. Thank you for calling, sir. Oh, thank you for having me. I know your life is busy, and I appreciate the 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 time that you're taking to talk. <laughs> of course. Well, it's it's the last podcast of 2020 and i think we have a little bit to talk about i think we have a lot to talk about particularly <laughs> uh what's 
what's happening. Well, I'll I will let you um. I'll let I'll let you guide the 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 conversation. So I there are goals. The reason I invited myself to this podcast. You're breaking up. You're breaking up bad. I want to instill a couple of ideas and thoughts. Chet, you're you're breaking up bad, dude. Okay. Hang on. Let me let me start something here. Okay. And if for, for, let me while while you're while you're doing that, let me give you an introduction. This the 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 caller in is Mr. Chet Weehy, who has been involved with Castro Valley News since day one, and uh, Chet, <laughs> gosh, um, we've done tons of ride-alongs with the sheriffs together. Chet has covered tons of fires, lots of stuff. So Chet is one of our uh, one of the guys who's who's our boots on the ground in regards to gathering news and information and uh you've lived in town all your life i'm why am i describing who you are why am i doing that what a what a bozo you're, you're, you're doing better you're doing better than I, do. I, don't think, I don't think uh i don't think that highly of myself in that regard oh but i do i do i do you're 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 top notch chet i love you well I appreciate that. And you're and you're you and you're too. one so, of uh, you're one of uh, my you're one of my greatest friends. Well, that means that means the world to me. I really appreciate that. Uh, we've done we've done we've gotten ourselves in some great situations. Yes, we have. We always, hey, we I wanted seem to come out on top. <laughs> I know. I wanted to mention that the na- the nineties called and they want their shoes back. <laughs> <laughs> and we have plenty of inside jokes. Yes, we do. <laughs> Oh man! So you wanted to do like a recap of 2020. So where where do you want to start? I mean, do you well, want to start? Yeah, I, I really want to. I really want to say, uh, give a couple of thoughts, a closing thoughts, if you will. Please do on on this year that has been uh, so difficult for for a lot of people and a lot of businesses, um, especially in Castro Valley and and you know because we are in Castro Valley, that's what we talk about. Yes, sir. Um, but we don't necessarily need to start there. We can definitely lead into it. You know that I do my research on businesses and stuff. Um, my business closed this year. Um, which, with the, which which business was that? The, the vending vending machine. Oh and no! And sales. Um, did you sell uh, everything off or? I did. I sold it off. Okay. Uh, my uh, Robert knows this. Uh, uh, we wel- my wife and I welcomed a baby girl. Uh, uh, about six weeks ago, um, story for another time, but yeah, yeah. And you uh, don't have to, you don't have to go into, into detail, but congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's had quite the, quite the rough start to, to life, but, uh, we're, we're grateful to have that as a bright spot on our 2020 radar. And, and it's just been a time for me to really focus back on my family and yeah, uh, my family and my animals and everything at home. And, and it was time for a business that taught me a lot to, to go, to go find somebody new that, that will care for it. Uh, like I used to care for it before, before everything got crazy. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Literally everything just, this, yeah, it's just been a dumpster fire from, from jump street. Yeah, indeed. So, um, I, I wanted to say that in, when I'm when we're talking about businesses closing and opening and changing and selling and buying and all that stuff that that I I wanted to to just make sure that people know that I'm not coming at it from just a reporter standpoint I've I've had I've had an experience of my own um, this year you've got also, you've got so. you've got skin in the fight skin I in do, the game yeah. sorry um, skin in the game yeah so yeah. Uh, I, I do my research around town and I uh, oh, you do there's yeah. a commercial property uh, for sale site that uh, that I browse regularly just for fun. Um, it I we didn't talk about this ahead of time. Usually we bring it up ahead of time, but okay. uh, the building, the property, the property and the business with crayons on it is for sale. That's been for sale for a while. Oh, it has been. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just found it recently and um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's the description is that. The, the bar and liquor license are, are included in the yeah. sale. Yeah. So I guess they're trying to 
trying to get out and move on. It may it, um, it may be time. I don't really recall if it's been on the market since uh, pre-COVID, but it's been it's been on the market for a while. And as as you can imagine, a bar is probably not going to be high on the list for people to to purchase at this point because every just abs- they're all absolutely closed. Absolutely not. Um, and let me mention that I, it I I would hate to see um, Karen who owns crayons um her departure but it it might just be i haven't spoken to her but it might just be time that she she might want to retire and spend time with her husband and her family and she karen is just an awesome person i don't know if you ever met her but she is i have yeah she's such a sweetheart and her husband her husband fred is as well so yeah i uh i i uh i was a regular at crayons for well not a regular oh that's right yeah I loved crayons uh, when I was of a, uh, recently of age and wanted something quieter than uh, it's mellow, quieter than than it, spankies or whatever. Oh if we were going out in Castro Valley. Oh gosh, um, <laughs> spankies, but, <laughs> which is going to be the beer baron, which is exciting. Yes, that is very exciting. I'm so looking forward to. Uh, I was looking for I was I'm I'm looking forward to that. I love my beer. Uh, my good local craft beer. Yeah, yeah. But um, but getting back to crayons, it's just it's just a mellow, cool um it's it's just a good vibe. It's a it's Castro a, Valley Castro Valley legend. It's one of those it's, it is. it's one of those legendary Castro Valley locations. And Karen, just a little tidbit of um history here, local wise. Uh, Karen was actually one of the very first women, uh, female, to own a bar. In in the East Bay, I don't I don't know particularly if she was the first, but she was one of the first um, during a time where, and I I did a I think I did a little story with her about this. Um, I seem to remember a story coming out. It was her her anniversary not too long ago, and she kind of went into detail with that, and it was like. Uh, during the time, um, w- women were not allowed to own a bar, or was frowned down upon, or some something nonsensical like that. But it, when when did they open? Uh, Do you remember off the top of your head? Oh, she's been there. I think her anniversary was thirty, forty, thirty or forty years, or something like. She's been there a long time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and um, like I, like like I said. Karen's awesome. I have I have a big spot in my heart for Karen. Um, she was one of the first people who were super nice to me when uh, when I actually when I started with the forum many years ago. So that's that's great. Yeah. 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 Uh, so um, yeah, we uh, and this year we also uh, welcomed the marketplace opening. Marketplace is opened during during, this dur- whole crazy during the time. pandemic, and I think I think their construction was closed down. Um, was shut down a couple times because of the shelter in place regs regulations. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm I'm in the construction industry myself, and uh, and and we've we've had jobs shut down multiple times. So yeah. So uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's not a it's not a it's a very difficult time that really makes you question you know double check with yourself as a business owner. Uh, you know why you're in this and what you're what you're in this for and yeah and what are you and doing and, and how can you change how can you adopt uh, Joe is mentioning that 78 crayons opened I just saw that yeah, yeah I just saw that and another useless well sort of another bit of information it, it was Duffy's before that it was a bar named Duffy's okay yeah Bef- there prior, you go. prior to prior um, to becoming crayons and crayon is actually Karen's nickname. She told well, that makes sense. Yeah, she told me the story and I totally forgot it, but which is kind of useless of saying that I know that. <laughs> Some so somebody says here is Crayon's closing. Um Crayon the the building no, and no. liquor license and business of Crayons is for sale. Yeah, but they not, are not specifically closing. No. They no. may change hands, they may stay open, they may change their business plan, the building may go to a new owner. It the whole we're not saying. I'm just. All I'm saying is that the uh, 
that the building is for sale. So that, that just opens up. Yeah, and that's uh, that's that's public uh, information. If it's if yeah, it's, that's public record. Yeah, so public we're not, record. We're not so. breaking any breaking any news here. We're just discussing it as a Castro Valley topic, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and I so, I don't I don't imagine that that Karen would would let the bar close. I, that's not, I, that's no, I can't speak for her, but I don't, I really don't think that's going to happen. It, it's emotional for it, it's you, you, you spend so much time with, with, uh, with a business, you know, developing it and changing it and learn and growing with it. And, and it's your baby losing with it. And it, it's, it's an emotional thing to sell it or close it or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I had my vending service business for only three or four years and I was, and I was, I struggled just to sell it. You know, yeah. I was, at first I didn't want to sell it at all. And then I was like, okay, hey, one, one, one account. And, and, you know, it was, <laughs> just to keep your it, hand it, in the mix. Yeah. Right? yeah. I know you loved it. I know you loved it. I, and it's, it, it was right up your alley, just going and fixing stuff. And it, people probably don't know, uh, Chet is like a jack of all trades and a master and a master of all of them as well. So, you know, going and fixing machines was was perfect for you. It was. Yeah. And the the people, I worked with people, I learned, you know, about the food service and all that stuff too, but yeah. It was time it was part of it was that it was time to go either all in or all out. And gotcha. With the family at home, it was time to go all out. Yeah. Underst- understandable understandable um so. someone mentioned this in um someone posted the question are we going to talk about the lumber yard and chick-fil-a so you you get to start that i saw you post i saw you post that today uh, yeah yeah um and i and i did speak to to the guys at cv lumber and uh-huh. it from what it sounds like uh a couple things may be happening there. There may be an option to where the lumber yard will coexist with Chick-fil-A on that parcel. Mm-hmm. And if that doesn't happen, uh, uh, they are adamant they are not leaving Castor Valley. So Good. they, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, goodness. yeah. He, they, they do. Um, and I, I was glad that he, they invited me over to, to walk the lumber yard and, and, and see some of the things that they do. But uh, they do a lot of other things with um, exotic materials, um, making tables and doing things. They're, they're, they've done a lot of stuff at the marketplace with um, some of the exotic woods that are upstairs and, and they're doing tables. So um, it's not just like lumber and, um, and nails and whatnot, but uh, they're adamant that they're not leaving Castor Valley. They will, if, they, if, if the plan unravels so that they you know, the, whatever the, the fast food pl- people want the whole parcel, they'll find another location. But, uh, so. That's excellent to hear. I was wondering, I, I, I mean, I know when you and I talked about this, uh, before, um, that, uh, that the, that they always swore that they weren't leaving Castro Valley. Oh, forever. It, it looks like they, it looks like they held true to their word. Yeah. So. Forever, it seemed like every when I was with the forum, it seemed like every two three years there was a rumor that they were closing or that um, this or that was gonna you know move in there. But um, you know, Castro Valley and their rumors. <laughs> <laughs> what rumors in a small town? What, what are you talking about? So um, yeah, that's gonna be um, it's it's January eleventh, I believe. That and that's will, the meeting, right? That's the meeting before the MAC, and it's it's informational only. They're they're not going to be. Um, someone else is calling in. Sorry, they're not going to be making a decision on it. Um, I'm hoping that maybe uh, there might be some preliminary plans posted on the on the MAC website, but there's that would be great. That would be perfect. Um, but uh, and they're they are proposing. Uh, a full, I think two full drive-throughs. Yeah, um, uh, Chick-fil-A usually has two drive-throughs. Okay, that's gonna be um, that's gonna be an interesting conversation to see unravel because um, the Mac and the Cal- well, the Mac particularly um, has frowned down upon um, drive-throughs. But we so are the Chick-fil-A, the Chick-fil-A drive-through that opened in Pleasanton. Um, they do the two drive-throughs really well. Yeah. 
Um, they're parallel drive throughs They they have robotics involved with getting the food out to the second drive through, um, and and it's not it's you you or I would not notice a real difference in the traffic patterns. I believe from a single drive through. Okay. Um, I hope the Mac realizes that. Yeah, and the other thing to to think about or or to maybe consider. Uh, since we're in we're in a pandemic, um, a drive-through might be optimal. Not that we're going to be involved in this COVID thing forever. I hope not. But God, I hope not. I hope not too. <laughs> um, but it, I mean, it's it's going to be a really interesting conversation, especially with the flow of traffic because it's right next to Burger Island. Yep. So. Um, like I said, it, I mean, it's it's all going to be it, it's all going to be on Zoom or, or whatever program the, the, the Mac uses. It's going to be online. So um, check it out on the 11th. Cool. And that that also brought up quite a few comments about fast food in Castor Valley. And. Do we still hold the Guinness Book of World Record for the I don't we of, uh... we, did, we never did. That was just a rumor. We never did. Okay. Yeah, we we might be getting close now. I I don't know, but I mean the the fact of the matter is fast food comes here because um, Casarelli supports it. Yeah. They, they wouldn't come Absolutely. here. They wouldn't come here if they weren't going to make money here. So. Yeah, and Chick Fil A has uh a, is a destination. Um. Is a destination store for a lot of people. Yeah. Um. It it could be a it could be a great thing for the golf course. Uh, for mini golf. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it, and I mean, there's a vet there too, right? Back set back a little bit. Uh, the, or are they still they, there? they moved they moved shop over to the building that was just constructed next to the Chabot where JD. It was. is okay. Yeah, that, that's, I thought that may be the same people, but I haven't yeah. been down there in a while. And I um, so is that is that building between the lumberyard or the parcel between the lumberyard and and. Uh, it Golf is. land available? Um, I don't see any signage there that it's for sale, but I, I don't look at it all the time. Um, my assumption would be that it's probably going to be on the market sometime soon, if not already. Yeah. Hey, maybe Chick Fil A can look can put there and keep the lumberyard in place. <laughs> that would be cool. I, I, I yeah. I think the, I think the corner location might be what they're looking for. I wouldn't be surprised. That's, and the and that's a, it. Yeah. Great thing for them. Um, what else? Oh boy. Uh, let's see. I did just look at the Mac website. Obviously, no no plans are being posted yet. Yeah. Um, it, it might be up this Friday. They're usually a couple days behind when it's actually posted. Joe, uh, Joe is mentioning that it will bring in more jobs for some of the local kids as well, which is which is a good point. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And 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 uh, it. Regardless of your opinion of Chick Fil A, I know there's some people that have conflicting opinions about their 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 involvement in things or whatever. But right. Chick Fil A pays very very well, and and I'm always pleased with the people that that have served me at Chick Fil A, um, and and uh, I have nothing bad to say about the people that work there, and I hope that it's a great opportunity for not only maybe a local franchisee but also um, kids and adults that that need jobs that pay a little bit better than your average than your average fast food job gotcha. um, are they good i love their food okay. yeah it's uh, high quality uh reasonably priced for a fast food you know gotcha and it, it, um, just for reference, I only ask because I'm a vegetarian, so I would have no idea. <laughs> exactly. Right. We'll, we'll get you a grilled cheese. There you go. <laughs> hey, it, in and out does those phenomenally. Yeah. They do. Yeah, definitely. Because once you tell them you're a vegetarian, they just pack on all the veggies, which is which is awesome. But that's. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, somebody mentioned Rite Aid in the comments. Oh. Nothing changed as far as I know. <laughs> not, n as far as I know, nothing. There has been uh, there has been a dumpster in front of the bait shop. It looks like they're cleaning, maybe remodeling something, or it's to do with the uh, mobile home park behind the 
the bait shop, but I'm I'm hoping the bait shop's still hanging out. They look like they're still open. They're they, still open. They may I, have been doing some work. I think it might be stuff from there's um there's apartments upstairs, and I think they yeah. might, I think they're doing some work up there. I could be wrong, but that's when I drove by one time, I I of course leered, <laughs> and and looked, and it looks like it looks like some stuff from upstairs, but yeah, could yeah. be. I just I'm bless I, their I hearts. Know that bait shop is one of those ones that. Uh, uh, the bait shop is one of those ones that that uh, changes hand every every now and again. Yeah, but just, it looks like it looks like they're still going strong, which is always good to see. Yeah, it just did not too long ago. So um, let's see. Uh, I have a thought okay. or a, an idea that this is this is why I uh, why I uh, why I invited myself. Um, the <laughs> they. Uh, so I'm seeing around social media, as I always do around this time of year, um, Instagram and Facebook, my, my two poisons of choice, uh, people saying how much they hated 2020 and 2020 did them dirty and, and yeah. uh, 2020 was rough for everybody. And, and it was, and there's, there's no denying that, but blaming everything on the calendar year is going to set a lot of people up for disappointment going into 2021. If 2021 sucks for the first half. Yeah. (laughs) And, and, uh, 2021 may, may be a, a, a struggle fest of people trying to recover from COVID businesses that took out, um, you know, paycheck protection plan loans that weren't able to, Unfortunately, you know, weren't able to repay them or, or, or got too far out on a limb or, uh, you know, tried to make it through COVID and, and didn't, uh, you know, we're still going to see, we're going to see a lot of legendary businesses, new businesses, old yep. businesses, yep. closing mm-hmm. a lot of new stuff, opening, um, everything, uh, everything in that realm happening in 2021 that that is no direct effect of the calendar year and people are gonna you know i I can already see people saying oh boy 2021 is going to be a repeat of 2020 or oh no this this year is off to a bad start no it's not it's 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 a culmination of last year's events and tragedies that 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 didn't all get you know that didn't all get resolved or worked out when the calendar flipped yeah it's and if you think about it it's going to be what we make of it it is absolutely what we make of it yeah. um there's an entrepreneurial speaker that i follow his name's gary vaynerchuk you may uh you may have heard of him uh he says that i and i wrote it down hang on i'm writing it down um he said, waiting for the waiting miraculously for your life to change when the calendar flips is silly at best and ticks me off at worst. And I, I relate so wholeheartedly to that, um, message. Yeah. Because I agree too. there are going to be people that are saying, going to, you know, wake up on January 1st and be like, okay, it's a new year. <laughs> Let's. What's changed? Let's all, let's all put COVID to bed and, yeah. and uh, you know, it's not like flipping a it. switch. It's, it's not. It's it's not that easy. <laughs> no, it's not like flipping a switch. We got we all got to put in the work. We we all have to put in work, and not just businesses too. I mean, we're talking. We all have to put in work. All of the uh, all of us as consumers, as as uh, landlords, as yeah. business owners new and old um you know your your business has changed your business needs a you know needs a, needs a refresh or or maybe it is time to to for you to take advantage of slower times and pass your business on to somebody new i i have a friend i went to high school with that that took over a bakery in berkeley the owner wanted to retire she'd worked there for 10 years and and it's her business now oh wow that's awesome um, and and she's doing quite well. So, 
yeah, you know, everybody's everybody's got to pivot and and walk differently and and ev and evolve and um, we need to support each other more. We absolutely need to support our local businesses a lot more. If that means not looking at Amazon so much, and I'm just as guilty as the next per next person for that. Um, yeah. Lately, lately, I have to say I've only used Amazon for for quick things that I know that I've gotten from them before and that I can't find reasonably priced at locally the at other retailers yeah and I and I've cut my Amazon spending down a lot good good for you um, so yeah I'm, I mean that's that's a small business step you know a sideline from from the covid stuff but if Amazon if you see something on Amazon it'll say sell sold by blah 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 if you research that site or if you try to find that business outside of Amazon, there are some times when they have the products for sale on their site comparably priced and then Amazon doesn't get a cut and they get to keep the business gets to keep more of it. Yeah, that's a good point. Worth looking into, especially in these times. Definitely. Amazon, yeah. Home Depot, Lowe's, Safeway, uh, you know, Lucky, Albertsons, whatever. All of them are going to be fine. Yep. Yep. Pete's, Owls, um, Valley Java, you know, Starbucks, Pete's, all of them, they're going to be fine. Valley Java, Bodie's Java, uh, Cornerstone Closed, Cafe, um, Cafe Rumi, Cafe Rumi, all, all of, all of these other shops, um, they're struggling. They're, they're, they're struggling. They're where we need to be. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And it now more than ever, the power of spending local is huge. It's huge. Uh, so spending local and being huge. Uh, there were several people that shared a story on my on my feeds, um, and and some on yours as well. You reposted it, uh, Rosa at, at Los Portales. Yes. Right. Yep. Um, she went viral just from having you know you know being upset as most restaurant owners are all restaurant owners are yeah you know being upset over over not being able to provide for your workers or and and stuff like that and some people shared her story and that she was just trying to help not lay off her people and uh and and they went she went viral and i i last i heard from someone who tried to get lunch from her said that it was over an hour wait wow good they're good people so there. and and with that said every business deserves to go viral absolutely so not that not that we have the means for one to go viral on your on your feed go find one and make it go viral yeah don't wait until you know the post comes up that this business is closing because they had no support and then when that happens everybody goes oh but i loved them so much and oh i was they're so great but you didn't yes. yeah but you didn't go support them even if it's just like you know a couple bucks for um a, a burrito or if you're just if you're gonna go to the creamery and get a, you know a scoop or lords or, or buy a yes. card from the hallmark store every couple of dollars counts so yeah um uh when this brings me back to uh when we did our small business saturday post uh, or, or video back in 2010 okay when when the when the boulevard construction was going on and we talked to oh boy yeah um janet at the salary yes and she said you know it, it it's not about coming in and spending even 20 30 dollars or in her case you know upwards of more expensive items like boots and leather jackets and stuff but she said somebody came in and and would just buy a bandana from her yeah and it was like it was like two dollars and fifty cents and she said it made all the difference in the world to her because because that person you know took the time out of their day to go um to go uh support her support her and, yeah and spend money locally in her community yeah did that two dollars and fifty cents put food on her family's table for for the next no probably not but it felt it good sure it felt good i'm sure it felt good absolutely and other people will probably be seeing someone walking in 
someone walking yeah. out with an item and and that might plant a seed in in other people's heads to say hey well maybe i should go check them out i mean that goes a long way it does yeah it does so preaching we don't to... want to feel like i don't want to feel like we're beating a dead her- horse of just saying support small businesses but moving into 2021 if you want to see our downtown continue to be revitalized and improved yeah this is this is your time to shine castor valley yeah definitely Absolutely. And we have no shortage of small businesses to support. And I know talking about beating a dead horse, this comes up often. Um, (laughs) These people who own our businesses, the businesses in our community, these are our neighbors. Absolutely. There are so many of these folks who live in our town or live in Hayward or or they're they're Bay Area people. They're they're our neighbors. So we're supporting our neighbors when we shop local. And, you know, like, for example, Rosa um, and Gustavo, um, be it Shay at the Ice Creamery or Aaron at Aaron's Art Studio, um, Christina at the Cuttery. These are people that we've known for years that we have probably a lot of us have friendships with. And, you know, once these I don't want to say goodbye to my friends, you know, no. so. And I'm sure they don't want to say goodbye to us. The and and I know for a fact all those people that I just mentioned, they all love Castor Valley. They they got skin in the game. I just said it right that time. <laughs> they've got they've got skin in the game here. I mean, they're not here just to you know try to make a bazillion dollars. They love our community, so let's let's give them some love back. And, absolutely, and, absolutely. And, and like you said, twenty uh, twenty twenty one. We're going to see more businesses folding. Um, San Francisco is estimating that they're going to lose 80% of their restaurants. Yeah. There was a restaurant that was open for 100 years. I think it was Chinatown. They just closed. 100 years. And and the the there was a place that I just read about on a news site up in uh, up in Concord. Our version of of the site and conquered uh, restaurant Lafayette that was open for 78 years. Closed that's crazy. That's crazy. Permanently. That's just crazy. And this, I, this is going to forever change communities. Our, 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 our outlook on communities and our, and the, the, what we see our community as and what our community is, you know, it, it, I, I see it also from a, a new business perspective you know let's say in two years when nobody has to wear a, a mask um and, and, and two years people, two years you know, oh no two, yeah i'm wishfully thinking here hopefully sooner but yeah um i, I mean i'm i'm thinking two years when things have recovered more you yeah know? okay um economically you know this this that may be open uh, that may open doors for young people or graduates new businesses um you know new revitalizations of of businesses to come in to get your to get your you know your foot in the door not saying that that the old businesses were bad but yeah but this this could down the down the road really open some doors for new people yeah no you're just finding a silver lining and i appreciate that I try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I wish more people would, would take that mindset and just, I mean, Janice is mentioning you can get takeout from JP's open. You can yep. get drinks too. And that that's the other thing. All of the restaurants, and I know you mentioned this already, and we are, we're still on that roller coaster talking about small businesses, but um, these restaurants, um, it's it's just peaks and valleys like well they can do outdoor stuff so a lot of these a lot of the restaurants got their outdoor dining um you know the the pop-ups and and seating out there which is not cheap no and then we're back to only doing takeout so it's it's just any place that's doing takeout and and like you said you're just showing them love even if you're going in there and buying um uh, some fries and a burger it, you know you don't have to be breaking your bank but it, it's it's just the fact that these people recognize that you took the time out and you chose you chose them 
you chose yeah. you chose to 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 patronize them and and support them so when outdoor dining was available um jp's was busy they were killing it they were destroying it they were it. doing a great job they were destroying it yeah so i'm hoping that that comes comes, comes back, back around. around soon yeah i i, I do too because i don't know how much longer um and and even worse is the salons and personal care places. Yeah. All these yeah. hair salons are closed. Nail places are closed. The tattoo shops are closed. And yeah. I mean, closed. Like you, it, you, you're closed. You can't. Oh man. It it it's really gonna. If this continues much longer, it really needs to be scaled back. I mean, I don't really think the surge was from people going and getting their hair done and 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 stuff you know it was the holidays i knew i think everybody knew that um there was going to be a surge as the weather cooled down and more people were being inside more possibly with with other people outside of their circle or whatever Mm -hmm. um well it was it was it was it was thanksgiving and um I, I understand that people want to be with their their loved ones and friends, um, but and even then I, I I didn't see a lot of it. I I I mean talking to I mean I'm sure statewide it was a different story, but right. It's it's and it's and it's our population here too. We have yeah. a densely populated. We're in a densely populated area. I actually noticed it during Christmas and Thanksgiving that um you know especially it, it looks you know you know when it's when it's christmas your your street is just packed with cars i saw that i saw that a lot so uh, yeah yeah but it's 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 it, hit or miss with where where it is i guess yeah definitely definitely but and and that's let's not tread into that whole political realm of <laughs> no the topic no, it's no, it no. gets it gets so ugly and it's just it's tiring not that not that you and I are are going to be arguing about it uh, because I I can <laughs> if anybody dis I mean I don't I don't I, I just I don't try to you know beat whatever opinion or belief I have over the head of someone who disagrees with me it's it's cool yeah it's what makes the world beautiful and amazing that we can disagree and hopefully we can disagree and still be friends and diplomatic but that's well kind of, maybe I don't know I it's kind of a to, dying I art have to, you know come after you with a with something. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's kind of a dying art, but <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, as far as 2020 goes, let's let's just let's end. I guess the recap with hope. Yeah. It's we're, it's gonna we're it's not gonna, gonna be in this forever. It's gonna get better. This will end. Yep, it's gonna get better, and um we're going to have to be resilient and strong and caring and compassionate. Yep. Understanding to our other, uh, to our other local, um, people, neighbors and businesses. Yep. Yep. Uh, there's a, uh, there's a quote from Joe Strummer, who was the guitarist and singer for the clash. And I think yeah. it's, I think it's pretty timely. And basically he said, you need people because without people, you're nobody. So, even if we disagree, we need each other. Yeah, we do. Yes, sir. Yeah, we do. Absolutely. So. Well, we're winding out the hour. So if you wanna, if you wanna call it, I'm comfortable with that. Unless you had something else you wanted to bring up. I I don't have anything else to bring up. I'm uh, I'm watching the comments on on my on my laptop here. Uh, it's positive. It seems positive. Uh, I did recognize a, a familiar name in the in the uh, in the comments, and I had to say that not all businesses, and the person listening will probably know who I'm talking about. Not all businesses in Castro Valley have a storefront. We right. uh, we also have a, a ton of of home businesses that are vital to our community. Absolutely, that employ local people and um, have a, a ton of local support. Um, on a on an industrial or commercial level, um, so just you know, just just because you don't see somebody, if you uh, you know see somebody with a storefront, 
they're 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 still there to service you or you know be yeah. able to provide a, a service uh, um, we have a couple of, of fantastic bakeries um that are that don't have storefronts that do a lot of stuff online so absolutely um uh, i don't know are are our home cleaners still being allowed to do that or i don't know okay. uh, i think that may be up to the person doing the cleaning and the person getting their home clean okay uh people doing uh, people yeah just someone just mentioned yeah uh, jen's jen's, yeah. jen's uh i just had my tax i just had my taxes done by someone who um who, who has her business out of her home in castor valley so those those people are still working from home as well yep so wood shops and and uh wood shops and all that stuff also totally um, yeah yep a any any small business that you can show some love to is uh is appreciated and definitely will be helpful yeah yeah and remember you're helping our neighbors stay your neighbors yes definitely well it looks like we've we've wound out the hour and i appreciate uh your time sir absolutely thank you for having me i really appreciate it you're welcome anytime you want anytime oh, i i i i'm sure we'll i'm sure we'll have another episode here in 2021 i hope so Hopefully more than one. <laughs> hey, like I said, you you tell me, and you're you're you'll you'll be on the books. <laughs> we'll make it happen. There you go. Thank you for calling you in, Chet. Close out. Or are you are you are you signing off also? Uh, we can both sign off. That works for me. Go for it. Oh no no All you. Right, you... Valley. Happy year end of 2020. Welcome 2021 in with a positive vibe. Take care of yourself. Be kind to one another. Enjoy. Enjoy your journey here, and uh, yeah, just be kind to one another, take care of yourself, take care of others, and have a great 2021. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, everyone, and we'll see you next year. Well said. Thank you, sir. Take care. You too. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you, Chet, for calling in. Thank you to everyone who listened, you can probably just hear me snap on my fingers there. Um, we do this every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And we talk about topics and issues of the day. In this instance, we talked about topics of the year. Um, I would be remiss in not saying hello to Don Shelpad, One Bad Apple Records. Now that he mentioned, though, Sean Connery, thank you for tuning in, Don. Thank you to everyone else. Thank you, Chet, for the conversation and sharing your time. Until then, we will see you next Tuesday, which will be 2021. Hope everyone has a wonderful New Year's Eve. Stay safe. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And as always, when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro.